Hi, I'm Jared Dunn, and I'm currently working on my master's, looking at evaluating automated and hybrid neural disambiguation for African historical named entities. To get an idea of what named entity disambiguation is and why it's a problem, we can simply ask ourselves, who is Bill? So given the name here on its own, it doesn't really give us much information, and we can't work out who it refers to. But if we add some context, then suddenly it becomes much clearer that it could refer to Bill Gates. However, if the sentence in which the word Bill is used changes, then it refers to a very different person. This is an example of homonyms. This is where multiple people might share the same name, but you can also get synonyms, where there might be multiple names which all refer to the same person. Within a historical African context, this can be a particularly problematic feature, as different narrators of the same historical accounts will often use different names to refer to the same person. To try and solve this problem, we can take the names and link them with entries for people within a database. Thus, we can work and see who a mention refers to by looking at the entry that they've been linked to in our database. This is usually done using a named entity disambiguation or NED system. The architecture we are using makes use of three modules. Firstly, entity identification. This simply involves going through the text and identifying all the names of people or mentions that occur within the text. Once these mentions have been identified, they are passed on to the candidate generation module. This module tries to extract a list of potential people from our database. Once these have been extracted, they are passed on to the entity selection module. The entity selection module tries to re-rank these candidates to select the person who is most likely to be referred to by our mention. In doing this research, we're trying to solve or answer the following research questions. How accurate are multilingual transform-based language models for named entity disambiguation when applied to text from the 500-year archive? So the 500-year archive is a collection of historical artifacts from the last 500 years of South African history. For this project, we'll be mainly focusing on digitized texts that appear within the archive, as well as the metadata records, which are stored for each of the artifacts in the archive. But what is a language model? Language models are essentially um, statistical distributions over text. So in its simplest form, we could just consider it to be a conditional probability. So what is the probability of a particular word, given the words that have appeared before it? However, we know that this doesn't quite work, because words are not only dependent on the words that precede them, but also on subsequent words. They are also not equally dependent on all the words that precede them. This is where transformer-based language models come in. Transformer-based language models make use of a set of transformer layers, which are able to allow the model to look at different parts of the sentence all at once and to apply different levels of attention or importance to different words within the text. These models then output encodings for each of the words as well as for the sentence as a whole. These encodings are simply vector representations of the text, but they have the useful feature that more similar words will generate encodings that are more similar. For instance, if we were to project these encodings into a two-dimensional space, we would find that apple is closer to banana than to computer. However, what's quite useful with this is if we change the sentence in which apple appears, its embedding will also change, so that it is now closer to computer than banana when we look at apple as a technology company. The second research question looks at how we might improve the performance of our model with the incorporation of additional data and handcrafted features. This is because we are unlikely to have, a, or we know that we don't have a large amount of training data, which is essential for these language models. So to try and make up for the lack of data, we can use experts to generate rules to help improve the performance of the systems. Our system is built up of four main components. Is firstly a testbed. This consists of our knowledge base with entries of people and a subset of the 500-year archive documents which have been annotated using crowdsourcing. This required volunteers to go through the documents and identify names and then link them with people entries within our knowledge base. 
If there wasn't an entry for the person, the volunteers would also create new people entries. In order to increase the quality, we have let each document is annotated by three different people. Our first NED model is the automatic model. This simply makes use of a supervised learning approach using the documents from the 500-year archive. The second model, however, extends this automatic model by incorporating additional data and handcrafted rules. Finally, we have a baseline model. This is used to benchmark our NED systems and takes a simple probabilistic approach to performing NED. The baseline is required because different data sets have very different levels of ambiguity within their entities. So this baseline will give us an idea of what a reasonable system should be able to do. These will all be evaluated using tenfold cross-validation, with the micro and macro F1 score as the primary means of evaluation. So to give a bit more detail about how these systems will be built, the automatic system uses a token classification um, model based on the language model for performing named entity identification. This simply looks at every word and tries to classify it as being part of an entity or not. Once these mentions have been identified, we pass it on to the entity linking phase, which consists firstly of the candidate generation. Candidate generation uses what's called a bioencoder. Here we use our context-aware embeddings, which we spoke about earlier, and generate one for the mention with its context and another for each person entry in our database. We can then compare these embeddings and select the most similar person embeddings to be our candidates. The entity selection module then takes these candidates and uses the language model as a classifier to determine if the mention with its context and the person name with their description refer to the same person. Once this has been completed, we evaluate the results to determine um, how well the systems perform as well as which cases were found to be particularly difficult. For these cases that were found to be particularly difficult, we will go to the experts from the 500-year archive and ask for help in determining how we might improve the performance. This could take the form of heuristics or rules, which are designed to help the machine with certain forms, for instance, where we have internal capitalization. It could also mean getting additional data annotated for particular cases or classes of name. Thank you for listening.